Today, we're taking a stand against woke nonsense. What frankly started as a fad among a few grad students has seeped down into corporations, the healthcare industry, and increasingly state government. It's the left that decided that woman is a dirty word. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and back to another video. Sarah Huckabee Sanders for the win. So as you saw from the intro, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who now is the governor of Arkansas, recently did a press conference in which she pretty much laid down the law when it comes to the woke nonsense against particularly biological women. And she did not come to play. I haven't seen the full press conference, but I wanted to react to it with you guys because I think this is such a pivotal moment for the state of Arkansas and also for the state of this country. Now, I know some people will say, oh, this is so ridiculous. This is so minuscule. Who cares? You have bigger things happening in the world than the woke misgendering stuff and the the woke language it's so you know petty it's ridiculous i've seen those comments but let me tell you why you're incorrect see it starts with words changing words and the pettiness and then it moves into action and then suddenly and if you're on the wrong side of the woke machine you get canceled you get in trouble you get fired you get demonetized you get deplatformed i mean so many things have come to pass because of these ridiculous new terms that tend to only be against biological women because like i always say for us biological men <laughs> We're just fine. Nothing's changing over here. But all of these changes, all of these progressive woke changes seems to only be affecting biological women, whether it be from trans identifying men or trans identifying women. And what I mean by that is biological men who identify as women, changing the rules, going into the women's locker rooms, going into women's sports and women's spaces, and completely affecting the spaces of biological women in order to make room for these biological men. And then on the other spectrum, you have biological women who identify as men who now find the words pregnant, period, biology offensive. Words that once were used to describe the woman experience now all of a sudden is too offensive. And we should be using neutral words in every setting to appease the sensitivity of less than 1% of the population. So that's why this press conference that Sarah Huckabee Sanders is doing is so important because what she's saying is, no, no. We are not going to allow you to change words and make the word women a dirty word. No, not on my watch. If you don't like it, here's a bucket. Go cry about it, liberal. So without further ado, let's watch this press conference together, react to it together, and discuss together. Let's go. All right, here we go. Come on, ladies. We got a whole crew. The real squad. <laughs> Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us. It's great to stand up here with some of the most influential and amazing women from across our state. We are all here to say, frankly, that we've had enough enough trying to erase women and girls, enough denying our biological differences for men, Ooh. and enough of the craziness that is taking over our country. Preach. I've had the honor of being both the first woman and the first mother to serve as the governor of Arkansas. Before that, I was the first mother and the only the third woman to serve as the White House press secretary. Because of that, I came into this role with a few pretty unique experiences. Among them is giving birth to three amazing kids. That experience underscored to me that a woman's perspective is important and fundamentally different from a man's. Boom. Nowadays, though, only conservatives seem to be making that point. On the left, women have taken a back seat to political correctness. It's really quickly, I love what she just said. Because what she said was completely accurate. The experience of a biological woman is vastly different than the experience of a biological man. We can even add to that. The experience of a trans identifying man is different than the experience of a biological woman and so on. These experiences don't have to separate us, but they do distinguish us and allow us to express ourselves in different ways because of our own individual unique experiences based on the sex that you were born as. Sorry, it just is what it is. And when people on the left try to make the, 
the argument that trans identifying men are no different than biological women. It's the same exact experience. They're women as well. There's no difference. There's no change. That's a slap in the face to biological women who have had a very distinct experience and who have had to fight for it centuries upon centuries to to have equality with men to not be treated as cattle to not be treated as less than it's taken centuries to get here so to now have trans identifying men and liberal women on the left telling biological women that your experience is not really unique that your struggles are no different than their struggles cut it out be quiet Make room for him. That is such a disrespectful slap in the face to biological women who have had their own distinct individual experiences that, yes, is based on the sex that they were born as. That experience is different than men. And it's okay to say that. And nowadays, you can't say that. And that's why you're seeing this push because people want to erase and eradicate the biological female experience because apparently it's not as important as the trans identifying male experience. Um, Alex, what is misogyny for 500? That's why Senator Irving and Representative Barker had to pass the Fairness in Women's Sports Act mm. to defend our girls across the state. They're using nonsense words to erase women and girls and more importantly, to erase our voices and our experiences. Today, we're taking a stand against woke nonsense. Yes. But frankly, started as a fad among a few grad students has seeped down into corporations, mm. the healthcare industry, and increasingly state government. It's demeaning to women and it needs to stop. Yes. In a moment, I'll sign an executive order banning a number of all sorts of ridiculous words from state government documents. Those include words like pregnant people, laboring person, <laughs> birth giver, and several other nonsense terms that have cropped up in recent years. Yes. Some on the left will accuse us of being nitpicky, that Arkansas should just lay down and accept the cultural revolution without complaint. I say it's the exact opposite. It's the left that decided that woman is a dirty word. Ooh. It's the left that decided we needed to toss Wait, 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 wait. We got to go back. We we got to rewind that. <laughs> we got to rewind that. It's the left that decided that the word woman is a dirty word. She's preaching right now. She is preaching right now. Wow. And it's funny because I know people are going to say, oh, but, you know, she wants to ban certain words. So she's no different than people on the left. No, it is different because what she's doing is she's saying you cannot penalize people for not using certain terms because those special words have become penalties. If you don't use pregnant person or chest feeders in documents, you get in trouble. It's an issue. It's a problem. And here's the thing. If you want to use those terms, go right ahead. Use those terms. But what you can't do is make that the compulsory word that we're all supposed to be using. Or the first option to be used as to not offend the trans identifying woman. I'm sorry, but you are less than 1% of the population. Why do you get to determine what words we get to use? Why do you get to dictate words that have been used for decades upon decades and now suddenly to appease your feelings, we have to speak in these neutral terms and pretend that the female biological logical experience isn't unique and different than a male experience. So what she's doing is so important because it's not about banning words. It's about telling the left, you cannot police words that have been in place for decades upon decades. You can't do it. Now, if you want to use those words in your general speech, go right ahead. That is your right. Free speech. But you cannot tell people on official documents in the state of Arkansas that you have to use those generalized gender neutral terms. Can't do it. Enough already. Again, less than 1% of the population. Why are we bending over backwards and changing words that have been around for so long for less than 1% of the population? That's called propaganda. And I don't understand why more people are not outraged by that. Blows my mind. But yeah, that, 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 that part of the speech, drop the mic moment. Basic biology and basic grammar along with it. I think they're just mad that conservatives are starting to fight back and they better get ready because we're just getting started. Ooh. Thank you for being here and thank you to the amazing women that are standing up here with me. I'll sign this executive order. We'll hear a few words from Dr. Chandler and I'll be happy to take a few questions. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Kay Chandler. Clap. I'm pleased to be Arkansas Surgeon General and I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist here in Little Rock. I've been serving women of all ages since 1997. 
but the governor's executive order doesn't require a medical degree to understand. It's just common sense. As I was taught in medical Thank school, you, Doc. and actually have known since I was five years old when I happened to be looking through my mother's nursing school textbooks and ran into some embryology textbooks, women give birth. <laughs> Today, that has somehow become controversial, <laughs> but it shouldn't be. Governor Sanders' executive order is smart on a number of counts. It stands up to those who try to erase women in the name of political correctness. Mm. In this administration, I know our governor won't let political correctness get in the way of science. Thank you. Isn't it refreshing to see a doctor who's not woke? <laughs> a doctor who accepts biology? A doctor who understands that chromosomal differences are relevant when it comes to men and women. A doctor who understands that biology doesn't change based on sociology. That's just refreshing because I can't tell you how many doctors I've seen on TikTok and all over social media speaking straight nonsense. Gender neutral terms and why it's important to use terms like pregnant persons. All you Karens out there who have your panties in a bunch about the fact that doctors are starting to use the term pregnant person instead of pregnant women. I want you to listen up. Unbinary people and trans men are also people. Pregnant woman because pregnant woman is offensive. Unreal. It's unreal that we even have to have a press conference like this in 2023. It's unreal. It's unreal that we need to do this in 2023 what has happened to our culture what has happened to this country if you truly respect women people on the left then you should be applauding what we're seeing right now because of virtue signaling garbage you won't clap will you again if you respect biological women respect biological women across the board if there are any questions i'll be happy to take a couple are there specific examples Well, there's always an urgency to doing the right thing. Look, I, I wish that we didn't have to write and have executive orders like this, but because of the growing trend uh, that continues to seep into all areas of our life, we feel like it's important. We have seen specific instances that have happened in state government and been reported in other places in state government. And so at no time will I apologize for defending women and standing up for the differences between men and women. Does it matter if there's one? Is that not enough? How many times should a woman have to be insulted before we stand up and say, we've had it? Like, it shouldn't even take one time. Uh, but one instance to me is enough for us to stand up for women and say that we can do better, yes. and we will. One is too many. I mean, I'm not keeping a running tally, but I have seen one specific instance, and we've had a, sep a number of other instances that have been reported to our office, uh, specifically at the health department. Are you currently As I just said, we've seen uh, specific instances at the health department and several others that have been reported. So you say you're Authentic. And that's a different thing. There's something different about whether your feelings got hurt versus something that is just factually incorrect. Exactly. You said they were insulting to women. I think it is insulting to women to define them as something other than what they are and to take away experiences that are so specific to them that cannot be uh, created just by saying uh, them into existence. So how is your executive order not enforcing political practices as you see it? Because you're trying to because there's a difference between what is right and what is wrong, Hello. what is factual and what is not. It's not just political correctness. It's literally the difference of what is accurate and what isn't. Exactly. No, not about feelings. Which actually, I think, underscores the exact point. Because we have a federal government that is taking those kind of actions, it is imperative for states to step yep. up and actually defend women. It's, you know, I feel like there's a question of why now, 
because we have examples where the craziness is seeping into our state and our communities. But I guess the uh, practicality of this, like our agency is going to have to scrub any links to any federal forms or any federal, the, the, the federal sites that, that use that term. How this would be specific to state government documents that we have the ability to monitor through an executive order. Now, are there any ways for uh, like an opt out provision or anything like that if state, if state documents would need to have that for any federal groups? I, I can't imagine why anybody would need to have incorrect information in a specific government form, but um, we could cross that bridge when we get there if needed. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to sign the executive order now. Sign it, sign it, sign it. <laughs> awesome. I can hear the woke tears falling now. Awesome. And there you have it, folks, a signed executive order protecting biological women. Why do we need that? Because the left is crazy. That's why. <laughs> and like she said, it's not about making this executive order because her feelings are hurt. No, it's because you literally are trying to redefine what a woman is. You literally are trying to redefine the female experience, which is baked into biology. So if you're going to do that, yeah, she's going to assert her power as the governor of Arkansas to say no. Not on my watch, not in my state. Sorry, not gonna happen. And it is necessary because biological woman <laughs> nowadays is a dirty term. And so this is her way of saying, we're not gonna buy that. We're not going to co-sign that garbage. We're not going to co-sign that political correctness. We're not gonna do it. We're not going to do it. And I love it. I love the symbolic notion of her signing that order because again, she's standing up against the woke machine, which is alive and well. Just look around folks. Just look around. Watch sports today, and you're probably gonna find a couple of dudes in your sport. I mean, it's literally happening in real time. So this is her way of fighting back, and I, and I personally love it. I think it's great. I think it's necessary. I think it's needed. I do not think that it is, you know, um, minuscule or not a big deal or playing politics. No, like this is necessary because of how far gone we have become as a nation when it comes to not understanding the biological differences between men and women. So yes, orders like this that seem so silly are needed because of where we are today. Sarah, you got my vote. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this executive order and of Sarah Huckabee Sanders having to even sign an order like this to protect biological women. Where do you stand? Do you think she's right? Do you think she's wrong? I think she's right. But let me know your thoughts below. I definitely would love to hear about them. If you enjoy my content, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit my notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video. If you guys want to follow me on other social media platforms, I'm also available on TikTok and on Instagram under Curly Boy Chuck, where I am continuously being canceled for thoughts like this <laughs> every single day just for you. Until next time, peace.